Merci. So I'll give my talk in English, but I'll first say a few words uh, about uh, Jean-Marc. So first, I thank the organizers for the invitation to this conference in memory of Jean-Marc Fontaine and Jean-Pierre Vintemberger. Donc, euh, donc je voulais juste dire deux mots sur Jean-Marc. Donc j'ai été son, son étudiant en thèse et le, donc le souvenir que j'ai, c'est que il m'a pris en thèse alors que je ne connaissais rien à rien. Je suis arrivé, euh, bon le cursus, j'avais rien appris, je savais rien, je maîtrisais plus rien en théorie des nombres, vraiment. Hein, j'avais je ne savais pas ce que c'était qu'un produit tensoriel, par exemple. Bon, j'étais motivé et, et il m'a pris en thèse, il m'a fait confiance. Bon, il peut là pour entendre, mais je voudrais le remercier pour sa générosité. Ok, thank you. Now I will um, go on with uh, some stuff about Dreamfeld space and local analytic representations now. So let me start with a, a small introduction uh, to explain the problem I'm, I'm going to deal with in this talk. So P is a prime number. And N is an integer, bigger or equal than 2. Very soon it will be 3. But and let me denote that H over QP. So I don't know if this is standard notation. But this is a Drinfeld space of dimension N minus 1. Drinfeld space of dimension N minus 1. So I recall that H as a rigid analytic space is P, P n minus 1 over QP, seen as a rigid space where you uh, uh, forget all the, the, the hyperplanes with QP coefficients. So union of H, uh, and this is all QP rational hyperplanes. Okay? And I think I'll just need that for the talk. You don't need any modulus interpretation or whatever for my talk. So there's a Durham complex, okay, with, uh, which I will just denote by uh, omega uh, with a dot. And since this, is a uh, since this is a Stein space, there's no higher coherent cohomology. So if you want to compute the Durham cohomology of H, it's enough to, to compute the cohomology. I mean, you, you can take the global section of the Durham complex and compute the cohomology of the complex you get by taking these uh, global sections. So this is what I'm doing here. Okay, so I have this complex, goes to omega n minus one, and this is the global sections, in fact. And we know that um, there's also GLN QP which acts on H via the action on PA n minus one, and so it's, it's also, uh, uh, well, e each, each uh, term omega i is a, re is a sum representation of GLN QP in some sense. <coughs> I'll make it a bit more precise and now. So let me recall uh, some well-known results about this complex and its cohomology. First, its cohomology, as you probably know, uh, this goes back to result of Schneider and Stuhler. I guess it was the early 90s, around, around that. So they, they, they proved that the cohomology of this complex, which is, as I said, the Durham cohomology of H, is, uh, the, the, is exactly the following. It's V, so I'm going to explain everything, P n minus 1 minus i, infinity dual. This is the algebraic dual of a smooth uh, generalized Steinberg representation. Algebraic dual of uh, V, P, N minus 1 minus I infinity, which is the following representation. So you induce 1 from P, N minus 1 minus I of QP to G, L, N of QP. So take a smooth induction, okay, smooth functions, and you mod out, but everything that is invariant under some bigger parabolic subgroup, <coughs> some over uh, the Q, uh, the parabolic Q, which strictly contain P n minus 1 minus i of the same induction from Q. Okay? Uh, and where P n minus 1 minus i should... n minus 1 minus i is the following parabolic. You put G L minus i in the upper corner and G L 1 everything else. And this is, I take some lower boil. This is... This is a, Okay, yeah, um, and there's 
only one case where I will slightly modify my notation because I'm so much used to it that uh, I cannot do otherwise. In case where, uh, so here of course i is between 0 and n minus 1, and when i equals, so let me see, uh, n minus 1, uh, yes, this is the Steinberg representation, so I will denote it by Steinberg n infinity. This is a Steinberg representation of GLN. Usual smooth Steinberg. Okay? So this was in the early 90s. Now, uh, 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 maybe 10 years later, maybe a bit more, I, I, I forgot a bit, they started to investigate not only the cohomology, so you see the cohomology is a dual of smooth, but this is not at all the case of the individual members of the complex. They're not dual of smooth. They're dual of locally analytic. So this was started by Schneider Teitelbaum. Schneider Teitelbaum. And then uh, completed by work of Sasha Orlik. So, um, well, uh, I'm not going to tell you everything they prove, but in particular, what they prove, th the following is contained in what they prove. So they prove that omega i is a continuous dual of a locally analytic representation of GLN of QP. So, <coughs> well, let me finish first, which, which is, a, which is topologically of finite lengths, finite lengths, and such that it's uh, irreducible constituents, it's topological irreducible constituent, irreducible constituents are uh, uh, sub quotients, always sub quotients of a locally analytic principle series. Locally analytic principle series. So things like you induce from the Borel to GLN some character, but you take the locally analytic functions in instead of taking the smooth functions. So I, 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 I'm not going to define strictly in detail what is a locally analytic representation because I would lose too much time and I guess this is not be strictly necessary to understand uh, what I'm going to talk about. Let me just say that the main, the main input is that the orbit maps, G goes to GV, uh, are locally analytic on the group as functions on the group GLN QP. But of course you also need a topology, so that's the whole one, one technical issue which is, uh, causes a lot of uh, technicalities but you have to go through this. Uh, <coughs> so there's a topology and it is, it, it is such that omega i is actually a fresh space. This is a fresh, a piedic fresh space. Okay. And then it's not fin finished. That a little bit, maybe around the same time, maybe a little bit later. Well, this was between 2000 and 2010. There was a result of uh, Jean-François Dat, <coughs> but uh, completed by uh, you need an argument due to Benjamin Schrein to make it work. It tells you the following about the complex. This time. Let me denote by D of GLN the locally analytic distribution. So by definition, this is the locally analytic functions, the dual of the locally analytic functions on GLN QP, with value in QP, for instance, and then I take the dual. So this means actually locally analytic. You can put a topology on this, not going to go into this, and take the continuous dual, and this turns out to be a ring, which is not very nice, a priori. It's not, not commutative, not Nasserian, but I mean it is a ring. And you can still consider the abstract category, uh, the derived category of DGLN module, abstract DGLN modules, okay, no topology. So, <coughs> so what, what, what they prove is that omega uh, is isomorphic to its cohomology in this derived category. So any, any omega i can be seen as an abstract DGLN module. And so the whole complex is a, a, a complex of DGLN module. And then you can see it in the derived category. And in this derived category of abstract DGLN modules, it splits. So you have such an isomorphism. Some i equals 0 to n minus 1 of v, p, n minus 1 minus i, infinity dual. And there's a shift, of course, in derived category of D 
GLN modules. OK. And the, th the, the question I'd like to uh, address here, um, well, it should be the, the natural question, at least the question. Can we find um, explicitly all such splittings? Not just working in this very abstract thing, but just by using some very concrete complexities of explicit local analytic representations, which are finite lengths, possibly made out of subquotients of principal series, and so on. Okay, can we make this explicit? Can one find explicitly uh, all splittings using, so of course you have to dualize everything, duals, uh, duals of complexes of uh, finite lengths locally analytic representations. Okay? And so for n equals 2, for instance, uh, we'll remind to you in, in one minute, this is okay. This is due to, this is due to Schrein. And it was uh, using also suggestion of Genestier, Alain Genestier, at the time. And, and the, well, one, one result of this talk uh, is that this is still okay for n equals 3. Okay, so you may wonder that n equals 3 is not so much. You would like to go any n, but I don't know how to do it for any n. And the proof for n equals 3 is quite explicit. And if you want to generalize, of course, you can probably generalize some pieces to GLN. But to have a whole picture for GLN, I mean, the representation gets more and more complicated. You've got multiplicities and so on. So you really have to find probably new ideas. Anyway, this, this gives uh, confidence that it should uh, be true in general, in fact. OK, so let me start with a uh, yes. So in this, uh, the right category is just purely abstract. Uh, purely abstract, no topology. So the idea is that you lose something because you don't have topology. Or I mean, and do you have uh, some unique, <coughs> unique such decomposition or, or it's uh, I, Oh, no, no, no. Of course, you can, co you can compose with the endomorphism of this in the DRF categories. This is, this is some um, Borel, because you have extensions between these representations. No, no. But I mean, once you have one, you have all of them just by composing with the automorphism here, okay? So, uh, yeah, no, well, that, that's, I agree, that's not very satisfying, this, so that's why I want to... But let, me, let me give you the, the case of GL2QP, it would be... It's simple, and you see what I mean. So I'm gonna give you the splitting for GL2QP, so two, this is the GL2QP case. Okay. So that is due to, to, to Benjamin. So for n equals 2, you have a very explicit description of omega. You have a... Uh, Ali gave you a, a, a sort of semi-explicit description for GLN, but he, he defines a filtration, and, 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 but the gradient pieces are not irreducible. So and you, th there's still some work to do to understand in general. But for n equals 2 and 3, we have the explicit description of the complex. So let, it, 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 is, it is exactly like this. So omega 1, and so th this means this is just 0 after, and it, it exactly looks like this. 1 C dual maps to C dual Steinberg 2 infinity dual, where C is some irreducible local analytic principle series of GL2QP, irreducible locally analytic principle series of GL2QP. And so what I mean here is that, of course, C, this is the continuous dual. And so this means a non-split extension. <coughs> non-split extension. So here this means that 1 is a sub-object. I mean, uh, 1 is the H0 anyway, so it has to be as a sub. And there's a non-split extension with some dual of some local analytic principle series. And it maps to C the same dual just by, you know, quotienting out by 1. And, and the co-kernel is the Steinberg, so you get the cohomology, okay? And so you want to split this, and here's the splitting. Um, you can go there. So you use a PID clog, use PID clogarism 
to sort of glue the two representations together. Piedic logarithm to glue. Let me... And what I mean is that, that, that there is a family of representations which, like this, uh, depending on the choice of a, a branch of the Piedic logarithm. So they depend on the choice of log P. Well, in QP, I mean QP. Okay, so there is such a representation where one, so I'm not going to, I mean, you find it by inducing, using the log. This is not very mysterious. Logarithm. So one is a sub. When you mod out, C dual is the sub. And when you mod out the quotient, you get the Steinberg. And so here's your splitting now. Well, you have the, oh, oh yes. Okay, so to build a splitting, I only need, maybe I should remind this first. Obviously, I have the, the complex concentrated in one embeds into omega, right? Because this is just the H0. So I only need to construct a morphism from, uh, from this to <coughs> omega, which induces an isomorphism on H1. Then I sum up with one, and I have my quasi-isomorphism. Okay? So this is the only uh, thing I need, I need to, 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 to build. Uh, isomorphism on H1. And so let me uh, give it to you. OK, we do this. OK, uh, and actually this maps to 0 goes to dual of smooth Steinberg. This maps to omega. OK, so here the map omega is just obvious. This is identity here. And here you just mod out by 1. And here the map to Steinberg is also obvious. I mean, you know, you, this goes to zero and you mod out by this. And obviously this is an isomorphism because you only have a quasi-isomorphism. You only have isomorphism in H1. And so, well, this is your, this is your map. Okay? And once you have this, you're done. Okay? And you've got all splittings like this because you know, there's this, all the splittings are given by uh, basically a, a parabolic space. So there's a unipotent parameter, but this is just given by the log. Okay? This is some X1 you can check. Okay, so now we want to go to, say, GL3. Try to do the same thing for GL3. And, and you can use the log to, uh, I mean, you, you can do a little bit for GL3, but at some point you're stuck. So uh, first, let me uh, give you uh, the description of the complex for GL3, which is derives from Orlik's work. GL3 is still not too much complicated, so we can do things pretty explicitly. So this is, of course, a little bit more complicated, but it looks like the following. So the O, so this is, by the way, this, this is a genuine isomorphism, okay, not in the derived category. I really mean the complex. So this goes 1, C1 dual, C2 dual, maps 2, so C1 dual. C3 dual. So here you've got VP1 dual, uh, smooth dual. There's a C2 dual, I guess. You've got something quite symmetric like this. C4 dual. And then uh, the last is C3 dual. Sorry, an extension with C4 dual and the dual of the smooth Steinberg. And that's your complex. Where the CI are irreducible constituents of a local analytic principle series of GL3. So not any more principle series, only irreducible constituents. But you can make this very explicit anyway. So I'm not going to do it here. I mean, you don't need to know, but you, everything is very explicit. So here, of course, the embedding, I mean, the map here is you mod out by one, and this goes there, uh, sorry, there. And then when you, when you take the kernel here, you know, you, you have only this mod the image, so you've got VP1. And here the map is, the map from there to there, you ju just mod out by this. So this embeds into C3, C4, and the H3 is, the H2, sorry, is the dual of Steinberg. So the notation is that in the middle you have the direct sum of the three guys. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle I have the direct sum, yeah, okay, so I should make this clear. So this, this is a sub. When I mod out by this, I have direct sum of these three guys with a non-split extension uh, with each. And when I mod out, mod out by this, I have an irreducible quotient. OK? This always means a non-split extension for me. So if you want to uh, build a splitting of this complex, of course, you still have one 
which embeds one in, in degree zero, which embeds in omega. And you can go one step further just by using the same idea for GL2. So let me give it, let me give it explicitly because this is not a, this is just the same idea. So you, so you, you can construct a morphism in the Dirac category, inducing an isomorphism on H1 as follows, using the log once again. So one C1 dual, C2 dual maps to just, you sort of, again, glue partially. And you can glue like this, and C2 dual, and then you got zero after. Okay, so I, I, I sort of can glue one partially on this part, okay? And this maps to uh, zero, VP1 dual zero. Well, obviously in an obvious way. And this, you can check, also maps naturally to omega. And this induces an isomorphism on H1. Okay, so this is your section somehow on this part. Now the problem is that if you want to do the Steinberg part, then apparently you, you're stuck. I mean, I was stuck for many years on this even though uh, you may find this strange to be stuck by this, but well, I was stuck. And let me explain to you why I was stuck. So I want to, um, now I want to build some, uh, uh, some morphism in the derived category from the dual of Steinberg placed in degree two, to omega one, two, 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 two omega. Uh, such that it induces an isomorphism on H2, okay? And if you try to do the same idea, then you fall upon the following problem. You, you, you want to glue. This is, you always want to glue representations, but this one doesn't exist. So uh, this representation here, VP1 dual, C2 dual, C4 dual doesn't exist with a non-split extension here, doesn't exist. Okay, so, uh, well, if, if it existed, this would be over. It doesn't exist because actually this one doesn't exist. Well, this one actually doesn't exist, so you... Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, so I was stuck by this for some time, and in, in the end, the way to split came from the number theory, from the spaces of periodic uh, automorphic forms. So let me remind... Uh, well, uh, I'm going to start something which a priori is dis disconnected from this, but I will come back to this, to this uh, map uh, at the very end of my talk, um, because it will be much more natural, uh, I think. So spaces of periodic automorphic forms. Okay, so, um, <coughs> well, for many years, people uh, like Peter Schneider, myself, and other people, we, we, we've been trying to uh, find interesting locally identity representations of GLN, GL3QP, and so on. And uh, the, the, we have some sort of uh, favorite spaces, I mean, maybe not Peter, but at least I, uh, which are not very interesting for, for people doing classical automorphic Langlands and so on, because the groups are compact at infinity, the Shimoa varieties have dimension zero, <laughs> Formula, trace formula are probably trivial and so on. Um, <coughs> but we just focus on the periodic representations, sort of getting rid of all the classical difficulties, because we hope that anyway the periodic representation will be the same in more complicated context. Okay? So let me give you the spaces we want to consider, which may appear strange at first sight. Uh, this is just because we sort of get rid of all other difficulties to focus on the periodic one. So here are these spaces. S this is the Banner spaces. So I, I, I define them and then I explain the notation. So this is spaces of functions from G of finite adels of F mod G of Q on the left, mod some open compact on the right to E, which should be continuous, where so so uh, E is a finite extension of QP. Actually, for the purpose of this talk, probably we could take, we could take QP, but in general, we have a finite extension. 
G over Q is a unitary group which is uh, compact at infinity, so G cross R is uh, UN over R, and split at P. GQP is GLN QP, GLN <coughs> over QP. <coughs> of course, we want, uh, we're looking for GLN QP representations, so we want it to be split at P. And actually, G becomes GLN over G, well, G is GLN over some quadratic uh, over F, which is some uh, 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 um, uh, imaginary quadratic, imaginary quadratic extension of Q, um, which is split at P, okay? And UP, so UP is a compact open subgroup, is a compact open subgroup of G of the finite adults outside of P, Okay, and I guess that's all. So you have such a space of functions. So this is a profinite set. So this is a Banner space, and it is endowed with a continuous action of GLN QP just by multiplying on the right. Okay, so here you've got pr only prime to P level, so you can multiply on the right by any matrix of GLN QP. This gives you an, a continuous action. Okay, this is a periodic Banner space. And we use it as a sort of a laboratory to make experiments. I mean, that's how I see this in any case. Um, as follows. So we start from a Galois representation, a, a modular, an automorphic Galois representation. And we take some Hecker eigenspace and try to see what, what comes in. So let me um, let me fix rho from Galois Q bar of F to GLN of E, which is absolutely irreducible and automorphic for G. So the function is supposed to continuous. Continuous, continuous, yes, continuous. Continuous. This is a C underline means continuous. And the and the 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 norm is the sup. The norm is a sup. Okay. This is a, this is profinite. So this is compact. So up to bounded power of p, it lands into the integers. And the unit the unit ball is the maps into the uh, the, the ring of integers. Okay. Be, be, because this is compact. Okay. So now by hypothesis, g is compact at infinity. Yeah, yeah, oui, 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 oui. Uh, G. Right. Oui, oui. Yes, you know, this is, this is a Mongol, these uh, n nice hypotheses. And <laughs> but still, the representation we get are highly non trivial, as you will see. I mean, and that, that's the point of all, the, whole, the whole thing. Absolutely irreducible plus automorphic for G. So, by the way, this implies by, well, very deep theorems, but classical now, that rho P, that the restriction of rho uh, at a place above p, but the restriction of rho to Galois QP over QP is Durham with distinct Hodge state weights. Okay, and so as I as I, as I told you, we use these spaces as follows. Uh, to such a row, we associate a locally analytic representation, which a priori depends on the whole of rho though we still hope it, it's on, it only depends on rho p, but we're very far to know this. By definition, this is the following uh, local analytic representation. So we take this, the, the corresponding eigenspace. So this is a uh, Hecker, Hecker eigenspace of rho. So there's a Hecker algebra, commutative Hecker algebra acting on this banner space by looking at the places which are um, totally split in G and F and uh, unramified in rho and u, p. Well, there's, there's some Hecker algebra acting, okay? So you can take the Hecker, the, the, the Hecker part corresponding to rho. Hecker eigenspace. Rho. And the local analytic vectors, which by definition is those v in uh, 
the Hecke eigenspace such that uh, G maps to GV is locally analytic on GLN QP. Okay, so th 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 this is a locally analytic representation, that's pi pi one, which is totally mysterious when we are not dealing with GL to QP. Okay, so now let me assume uh, I, I'm going to put myself in a specific situation because I have this, uh, this uh, Drinfeld complexity in mind, so I, I will assume that I am in the Steinberg case. So this will make life a little bit simpler. And I will also assume that all my hot state weights are as concentrated as possible. So I now assume that one, uh, the classical, by the classical local Langlands correspondence applied to the Weidelin representation of rho p, you just have the Steinberg, so up to twist. Up to twist, okay, and I'm going to assume too that the hot state weights, hot state weights of rho p, weights of rho p are n minus 1, n minus 2, 0. Maybe up to shift. Okay, I, I don't care in this talk about the twist and so on. I don't want to make mistakes, but the, the, there are probably twists and shifts all over the place, but uh, it's not very difficult to deal with. Um, I also recall to you, in case uh, maybe this needs a bit clarification, that this violin representation of rho p here is just the, uh, so we saw yesterday in Colmes' talk, the DST of rho p, which is BST tensor QP rho p invariant under Galois QP bar over QP, okay, which is an n-dimensional E vector space. And we just, the, this is just the, this is just Vaderin of rho p, except that we forget the, the Hodge filtration, forgetting the filtration. So the filtration is being induced by the one on BST, but you just, just forget that, so you still have a Frobenius monodromy operator and you get your Vaderin representation. Okay. So I, I'd like to state a conjecture I have with E wending. Now, in this uh, specific setting, or oh, maybe uh, actually <coughs> stated here. So we are concerned with trying to understand a bit this representation. And the idea is that whatever we have in this representation will be interesting, hopefully. And so, so I have a, a conjecture with uh, Yiwen Ding, which absolutely does not tell you what, what this is, because this apparently is very complicated, and maybe this is not even a good idea to try to make it explicit. But we'd, we'd, we'd explain to you a, a small part of it, but which will be enough for the application. So conjecture uh, with uh, Yiwen Ding in Beijing. So for each j in 1 and minus 1, there exists a finite length in decomposable, well, of course, everything is topologically finite length, topologically indecomposable, uh, locally analytic analytic representation of g l n q p over e made out so uh, local <coughs> representation let me denote it by pi j this conjectural local analytic representation made out only made out of sub quotients of principal series made out of sub quotients well, by, by which I mean the irreducible constituents are a sub quotient of a locally analytic principal series, made out of sub quotients of a principal series, locally analytic. So, so the, the irreducible, irreducible constituents, I mean, this is not a problem to understand the irreducible constituent. The problem is the, the extensions. Excuse me, when you say principal series, you always mean 
produced from the borel? Yes, yes. Well, some <coughs> constituent can be found in parabolic also, but if you take principal series induced from the borel, you get absolutely everything, okay? And for some, you really need the borel. Uh, made out of subquotient of principal series, and so there exists such a thing, and and a natural isomorphism, well, maybe I should say, and an isomorphism. It actually sh should be canonical up to multiplication by a non-zero scalar, but and an isomorphism. Uh, the, both of them, only depending on J. I mean, I have fixed my Weidelin presentation, which is the, the, the Steinberg. This being fixed, I have th these things should, not, should only depend on J, actually. And I, I've also fixed my Hodge state weights. Uh, so both only so this representation and the isomorphism I'm about to write only depending on J. So uh, between x one G L N Q P pi of J with the Steinberg. So I'm looking at all possible extensions uh, of. Uh, pi j by the smooth Steinberg. This should be isomorphic to lambda n minus j of the Valdunin representation of rho p, such that um, any, any embedding from my smooth Steinberg into this mysterious representation here well, you, you, you know we have such embeddings because this is just the smooth part and the smooth part is dealt by the classical theory. So we may have even many such embeddings depending on the prime to p level. Rho n extends to uh, uh, an embedding with some extra, I mean with, with a certain extension with pj by p of rho n where this extension is the unique one, uh, maybe I go in, uh, maybe I go in here, <coughs> where where uh, this extension here, which uh, sort of extends the Steinberg, is the unique one mapping to the line, uh, so the, 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 it depends on the Hodge filtration. That's the point. Uh, fill minus n minus j dst, which fill minus n minus j plus one dst, and uh, until we get the last step, fill minus n minus one dst. Okay, so we have an unsplit extension, so it gives you a line in the x one. And under this isomorphism, it should map to a line here, and this line should just be given by this, the last step of the, Hodge, the induced Hodge filtration on a Valduin of rho p identified with BST tensor rho p. Okay? Um, so in particular, that what this means is that right after the smooth vectors, you have an extension with something which doesn't depend on the Hodge filtration, but this extension depends on only this part of the Hodge filtration. And you have it for all J. <coughs> yeah, this is which? This is in this. This is the image. Okay, the, 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 all these spaces are included one in the other. So in the end, you get a line. Okay. okay. This, this, this is just the last step of the, in, of the Hutch filtration in naturally induced on, on, on this guy, which turns out to be a line. So we have a, a, a theorem with UN, a partial theorem. I mean, no, a theorem which is a, a weak version of the conjecture for n equal 3, which I want to state and give a few ideas. Ah, maybe I should not. Yeah, I'm not going to erase this. I can erase this. Yes. <laughs> can I ask you? If yes, yes. Experimental findings, or, or do you have. Well, well, first, well. Well, it is okay. Okay, so it is okay. It, for instance, it's okay for n equals two, using all the results we have for GL two QP. For, you no, know, well, I mean, uh, how can I answer to that? 
Oh, well, yeah, in partly, yes. All examples I have satisfy this. Especially all this business with companion, constituent, and so on, they fit into this. So, but here it's m somehow really involved the hot filtration. This is what I, uh, what is uh, maybe. Uh, uh, okay, so um, let me state the theorem we have with UN, which I've already, I mean, this part is not new. Theorem 2 uh, with Ding. So we, we assume n equals 3. Okay. Then, uh, so we have only j equals 1 and 2. Then for j equals 1 and 2, there exist, there indeed exist, there exist um, um, pi j satisfying uh, such an isomorphism. I mean, we also have such an isomorphism. Um, such that, such that uh, uh, any embedding from the smooth Steinberg into pi p of rho n extends to a unique extension. Extension. So. Um, uh, so you have this embeds into Steinberg pi j, which embeds into pi p rho n. And the, the only thing we don't know, so, so where this extension, where <coughs> this extension only depends on, only depends on, and determines the line uh, over there. So. Uh, Field minus three minus j wedge blah blah wedge field. Uh, I guess it stops at uh, minus two. But we do not know that. Uh, so we have such an isomorphism, which is essentially canonical, and we have a. I'm going to say very quickly how you can build such an extension. Uh, but the proof, in fact, doesn't tell you that the image of this extension here is exactly this line. I mean, you could have some minus signs, some linear combinations on the L invariant, something like that, that we do not. Uh, I know how to uh, get rid of, but we know that it only depends on and determines, in some sense, this line. So but this comes from the proof. So let me uh, give you some very quickly some ideas of the proof, because this pi j will be the thing that is needed to split the complex. I mean, somehow forgetting about the global uh, setting, but uh, still, it's nice to see wh where it's come from, maybe. So I... Uh, Um, yeah, let me give you some ideas of proof. N yeah, well, what is needed in the proof to uh, to make this pi j a sort of natural form, maybe some ideas, ideas of proof. So um, um, I will, I will, I want to only define this extension. Okay, I'm not going to care about proving that this is the thing that occurs in the global context, but just to defining once we have fixed row. So we fix row, and by the way, I have to twist. Row always has the following form. I mean, if you look at my assumptions, where epsilon is a piedic cyclo, piedic cyclotomic character. And yeah, this is semi-stable. The hot state weight is 0, 1, 2, so it has to be like this. And by symmetry, I'm going to only treat j equals 1. j equals 2 is uh, symmetric. OK. Um, so, let, so there are, <coughs> let me start with the first point. The first point is to try to use anything we can from a GL2QP and induce. This is a very rough idea all over the place. But OK, so we, for instance, can consider the following representation. This is the first square <laughs> here, which embeds into row. This is a representation of dimension 2. So we know that there's a GL2QP representation associated to it, right? <coughs> so we have a pi p, or even pi of row p1, analytic. This is the locally analytic representation of GL2QP associated.
Okay? And we have more because uh, in the GL2QP, there are strong results using all the results of all these people. Uh, well, I, I actually, this was the, fir the case that I uh, thought about a very long time ago. In fact, this particular case, and then there are all these results of Colmez, Emerton, and so on. So, uh, and Peter Schneider. So you, you, you also have an isomorphism, so next one. But at the level of GL2, of course. So if you look at the, uh, the, 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 the X1 of uh, this local genetic representation with itself, well, sort of the infinitesimal deformations, if you like, well, there's, this is, there's a natural isomorphism with the X1 on the Galois side. Galois QP bar over QP, row P1, row P1. This is an isomorphism of five-dimensional vector spaces. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. Now, uh, let me give my second point. Um, so the idea, which turns out to, to, to work in that context, is to use some uh, Poitou-Tate pairing. So let me make a small... Uh, uh, so for, for here, I'm only on the Galois side for this part. So we have the, the, the perfect pairing, the following perfect pairing between x1, uh, 1, row p1. Okay, so this is an x1 of Galois QP bar by QP representations with x1 of row p1 epsilon, the periodic cyclonic character, which maps to x2, 1, epsilon, which is E, and this is a perfect pairing, perfect pairing of three-dimensional vector spaces. Okay, now, remember that all these Galois representations, we can see them as uh, phi gamma modules over the Roe bearing. So, by the way, phi gamma modules over the Roe bearing were first introduced by Fontaine a long time ago, which he had Charbonnier work on this, and then the whole theory was worked out by Charbonnier, Colmez, Kedlaya, Berger, Roshan Liu, many other people. Um, so in any case, this, you can always replace a Galois representation by its uh, a phi gamma module over the Roba ring. Okay, so in particular, I claim that this perfect pairing induces another perfect pairing <coughs> of two-dimensional vector spaces, but you have to go through phi gamma modules over the Roba ring to see this. So let me write it. And then uh, d ridge of rho P1 cross x1 phi gamma ah no I take the hot state extensions here so this is a, a, a key point but I have no time to go into it but this is key rho p1 barring twisted by epsilon x to e so very quickly this guy here you can see it inside the rho barring itself by mapping one to the element t of yesterday okay and so by functionality, you have a map from there to there, which turns out to be surjective. Okay, so this is two-dimensional. So this guy is a two-dimensional quotient of this one. And this guy, you can check just by the same kind of functionality, is a two-dimensional subspace of this one. Okay, so we've got a perfect pairing, which induces another perfect pairing between a quotient, two-dimensional quotient here, and a two-dimensional subspace here. Okay, well, we have this. Now let me go back to the GL2QP, or even GL3QP now. Um, this is the first point. So I'm going to mix the two. So uh, so this is three. <coughs> so uh, we use one plus parabolic induction. Which concretely means that if we have an extension like this, uh, so wh what was my notation? Pi p pi of rho p one, rho p one, and like this. Well, we parabolically induce. Locally, I think induction is exact, so you still get an, an x one, an element in x one. From uh, we induce from the Borel p one qp, which was the one I introduced. Uh, you know, the GL2, GL1, 
GL3, pi of rho P1 n. So this is, of course, a local kinetic parabolic induction. And same thing. Okay, so you can, you can play this game. You start with an extension, you parabolic induce, and then it turns out that lots of irreducible constituents comes out in these parabolic inductions. Okay, so in particular here, as a sub, you've, get, you've got the other sort of general Steinberg, where Q1 is uh, GL1, GL2, 0. I recall to you that P1 is uh, GL2, 0, GL1. Th th this actually appears as a sub here. And here, so as a sub quotient, so this is not a sub, so I'm, I don't know how to write it, but as a sub quotient, we have the uh, 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 following representation. So I'm going to use the previous notation. So we have the Steinberg, and then we have something like that C4, C3, VP1 infinity. So these guys are the same as the one that appear in my uh, complex, which is over, over here, up, up here. But there's, a, th there's another one, C5, which I could also describe, which is also an irreducible constituent of a principal series. It, it, is not, it doesn't appear on the Durham complex. That's the point. OK, so you, you can, and, and then by playing with lots of push, pull back and push forward, so uh, by playing with pull, backs plus push forward, you can manage to prove an isomorphism between x1 using uh, all these things, x1 um, uh, for GL3 this time, vq1 infinity, and this guy, c4, c3, v, p1 infinity, c5, this and that to be isomorphic to the Hodge state extensions. So this is a non-trivial fact, okay? Because you have to use, for instance, results of Dospinescu, Hodge state between d ridge of rho p1 and r e of epsilon x. So we end up with something like that. And now, basically, we are almost done to construct uh, an extension as uh, as there by uh, going as follows. Um, oh maybe I can erase that now. So we, we, we start with rho p. We, 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 we see our, our representation rho p as the next one <coughs> using rho p1 and, and the trivial representation. Okay. Let me. So you start with rho p. Um, so you start with rho p and you see rho p as an element of x1 of uh, one row P1, right? This is what it is, if you look at this. This you must map subjectively to X1, as I said, in, in, in the world of uh, phi gamma modules of R uh, E of X dirige of row P1. Okay, so this gives you an element, let me call it the U of row P. This is a line, this is two dimensional, this is a line, one-dimensional subspace. And then you use the pairing over here, and you take the orthogonal, u of rho p. This is also a line in x1 hot state of Dirich of rho p1, r e of epsilon x. OK, so this is a line because the spaces have dimension 2. So the orthogonal of a line is still a line. And this, then, then this is isomorphic to your x1 for GL3, which uh, is there, OK? So meaning that the, the line you have gives you up to isomorphism a unique non-split extension. OK, so get, you get, get like this, a unique uh, extension as follows, Steinberg. C4, C3, VP1 infinity, C5, and VQ1 infinity. Okay. Okay, and this 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 part is actually the, the pi one. Well, I could take it as a definition somehow, because you can check it doesn't depend on anything. Okay, and now uh, yeah, I have three minutes, but this is perfectly the time to finish my uh, 
my application. So now the idea is that this, this thing seems to be interesting. So we're going to try to plug in in the complex. And this is really how uh, things happen somehow. And, and here's what you can do. So um, you start with, um, I, I recall to you that I want to uh, that have 0, 0, the dual of the Steinberg placed in degree 2 on one side, omega on the other side, and I, I want to build a map in the derived categories, which induces an isomorphism on H2. Okay? And I want to go, as I did, through some explicit complex here, which map to both, and which is a quasi-isomorphism here, and which naturally maps to the omega. Okay, so the, the, the we have, for the beginning, we uh, just recopy what we have, because we have no, well, there's no choice, basically, for that part. And for this part, you see, we have, if you dualize everything, we, we, we have this, this part is, uh, the dual of this part is on the complex. So let's, the idea is just, let's, let's add this. <coughs> Without trying, just try. And this is really how, uh, hoping that this is interesting, so you get something interesting. So let me write the dual of this, you get V Q1 infinity dual, C5 dual, C3 dual, C, uh, no, sorry, VP1 infinity dual, C4 dual, and Steinberg 3 infinity dual. Okay. And we want something which only has cohomology uh, in degree 2 and being the Steinberg. So re remember, we, we had this problem that we could not glue. So OK, let me write it. C1 dual, VP1 dual, C2 dual, and we have the C4 dual. So this representation, as I told you, doesn't exist. So it looks like you've made things worse by adding these two guys. But in fact, you can prove now there's a small miracle that happens that if you add these two constituents, uh, like this, so V Q1 infinity dual, and yeah, you put a C5 dual, so this is just this, this thing that I want sort of to compensate, and then I have to put an extension here and here, then you can prove that there's a unique such representation. There exists a unique locally analytic representation which, have, which has this form. Okay, so the, co the, the, the sub is 1. When you mod out, you have C1, and VQ1 dual as a sub. When you mod out, you have these three as a sub, and so on. Just follow the, the non-split extensions. The, there exists a unique such representation. And then this is a complex. OK, so uh, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is three here and two here. The words that would be. So this part goes here. And the map here, you just take the, the other part. And this naturally maps to omega. We can check. This is the identity here. To go to the part in the middle, you just mod out by this part. And to go to the last thing, you just mod out by this. And well, you can check this uh, quasi isomorphism with here. So you get your section. OK. So the, 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 the thing is. Uh, and you get all splittings like this, okay? Because this representation actually depends on two parameters. This can, you can prove. You had the former section with a VP1, which depended on some log, and you get your three parameters, which gives you all possible splittings, okay? Um, so the, the, only, the, the only new feature for GL2 is that these, you have to add these two things to make the thing work, and these two things do not appear on the Durham complex. So you have to, wow. Well, on the, for GL2, you just have to glue. So I, I, I have no, I don't know how to do this for GLN, for N uh, big old code than four, because representations are too complicated. I mean, you cannot do, you have to make more clever arguments, cannot be so explicit, but you can guess what you have to do. You have to uh, glue some parts together, and for this, you may need to add some extra constituents, but you also need to add some extra constituent to compensate the constituent you added to glue the, 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 the degree before. Okay, so, uh, but now I don't know how to make this uh, um, less explicit and more uh, conceptual. Okay. okay, so I guess two minutes later.
Et les questions uh, Very yes. naive question. So, very long ago, um, the Ling had some uh, uh, criteria to, uh, uh, for, for a complex to be uh, decomposable in D. So, some endomorphism of degree 2, for example, inducing a certain isomorphism from HN minus i to HN plus i. Uh, so, some kind of uh, vicious operator, or a family of uh, uh, pi i from uh, x to x, or, so that uh, on the cohomology you, you get the data i. So, so uh, some abstract uh, So, are there any. Uh, uh, the, probably you tried, but there is no uh, interesting endomorphism or even. In, uh, even in the Dirac category? You mean endomorphism of... of, uh, the, of the, 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 the Ram complex? Well, the Dirac complex, you know the endomorphisms. This is the, what I answered. No, 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 but also in the <laughs> Dirac category. Uh, but no, I don't... I, 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 of two, for example? No, I don't think I know this. In the Dirac category. I can't tell you wh where the splitting of that is coming from. It's just coming from some... So that some x i are zero. For instance, x2 between VP1 and Steinberg smooth is zero, so, so some stuff like that. So he, he, he uses things like that. So I don't know if this is the same thing as Delin's thing, which I don't know. But, but two uh, theorems in, uh, in Delin's paper. One is about some kind of luscious operator, probably you don't have that. And the other is about a uh, family of, uh, of uh, endomorphism, but also in the R category. Uh, the family pi i, so that Fg of pi i is delta Fg. So yeah, probably, uh, 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 when n uh, com comes bigger and bigger, you would need some maybe some uh, some general. Uh, I, I I don't know, but I but I suspect anyway that uh, probably with Delin it's probably some as abstract statement, right? Anyway, he doesn't construct explicitly. Does he construct explicitly the splitting with explicit complexes and so on? No, concrètement, il applique on applique ça avec une classe de Lefschetz après. Oui, une classe de Lefschetz ou autre chose, une décomposition. Okay, I don't know, I don't know in that setting. I have no idea in that setting, but I'm curious to learn. The structure of this omega and and the morphism, some more more operators. I see, I see, I see. Because you want to send the, the, the Steinberg minus 2 into this. Yes. And, uh, this is very hard, yes. It seems, yes, in general, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, not just the Steinberg, when you're dealing with GLN, all the previous species also. Yes, yes, but uh, you, you're um, dealing with x1, x2, x3, x4, and much more. So then the, there was an attempt in Berlin to find a systematic way. Okay, I, I should check that. Thank you. Uh, oui? In this situation, if I understand correctly, in your Peadic Banach space, uh, you uh, just the original construction. Yes. Uh, you also have a smooth representation. Yes. Inside. Yes. And well, this is a smooth Steinberg. Yeah. If you um, in that case, if you make good choices, you can uh, manage that uh, the smooth part is only uh, one copy of the Steinberg. Probably yes. Uh, <coughs> so multiplicity one. Yes. So uh, that's all there is. Uh, I mean, the, these are the only smooth vectors. Here. Yes. Well, you can manage to have multiplicity one, the smooth vectors, probably by increasing up. Yes, but assume uh, you you arrange a minimal level. Yes, 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 yes. You, you have only one copy of the style. Yes, but no, no. But then you have the. You, this mean, just means you have one copy also of the extra thing. I mean, I don't know. Of, I, of what? Okay. So what you have is if you have d copies of the Steinberg. So this is. Whatever, um, by the way, this is not specific to the Steinberg. No, specific. Only one, uh, yeah, no but let me, I don't know, I'm not sure I understand. If you have this in, inside this eigenspace, yeah. then what I'm just saying that you have more, you have d copies of uh, some extensions. It, actually, all the amalgamate sums with all the. Okay, this is all I'm saying. I don't but know if this. Suppose d is okay, let's assume d equals 1, yes. yes. Then? Uh, you, you are telling me you have more uh, yes. smooth vectors? Oh, ah, no, 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 this is not smooth. No, the smooth vectors are the, are, are the same, of course. Okay. No, you leave the world of smooth vectors. Okay, but the only thing will be, in this case, multiplicity one and so on, it will be just that one copy of the Steinberg, right? The smooth vectors will be only that copy of the Steinberg, yes. Okay. Not specific to the Steinberg, by the way. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. also if you have some other... Well, your assumption. Okay, yeah.